I'm craving for like oat porridge and still the fruit and my smoothies in the morning. I crave for just a nice salad but also eggs specifically and but also when I see commercials about McDonald's and I just want to eat that burger. <laughs> it's it is sometimes really difficult or yeah, sometimes I crave for pizza. It's just I basically crave for everything. Starvation is not a sickness, but a competence of human beings. We all are accustomed to starve for some weeks or even two or even three months. So in, uh, in evolution, every human being died that was not able to live without food for several weeks. So all our ancestors have been human beings that were able to live uh, without food for some weeks or even some months. I started with the fasting yesterday, so today is day two. We have a special course on malnutrition and we are dealing with all the biochemical and the medical aspects of malnutrition and refeeding. And one part of this course is a self-experience for the students so that they know the feeling how it is to uh, not to eat for, let's say, some days. Uh, if the students would continue with fasting, they would uh, develop the clinical picture of marasmus. Marasmus um, is, a, is a Greek word and means to fade away. And we say they are looking like, uh, especially the children, are looking like little old men. The hormone insulin plays a major role as a switch between normal carbohydrate metabolism and ketogenesis. If we eat, Carbohydrate is stored as glycogen in the liver. If we stop eating, we take the carbohydrates from the liver and after this we take protein from the muscle. If we have a low carbohydrate in the blood, we have low insulin and then ketogenesis from fat will start. And then the brain will be fueled by fat, keto bodies and will only need 40 gram glucose a day. I would say with this powerlessness that you're, it takes so much more effort to go and actually do stuff, even though I have been trying to stay active, it's way harder to motivate myself now to go off a run than it is on a normal day of not fasting. In hunger metabolism, the muscles and internal organs are melted down to almost about 50%, which can produce a lot of problems for the heart and for the kidneys, for example, and will cause the death. The only organ that is not melted down is the brain. The brain stays almost exactly with uh, its original weight. If we have a starvation with a high or normal insulin level, we call it kwashioko, which uh, comes from Ghanaic language and means the child that con cannot be breastfed and has to eat normal porridge food and then uh, they get of course uh, infection from the food and uh, they uh, with the infection they cannot reduce the insulin so they cannot uh, be fueled with keto bodies and they have to use their proteins for energy production and then they will burn away all their functional proteins which is including the antibodies and then they will normally die very quickly from infectious diseases. In our course, the students are normally healthy persons, and if they have a disease, they are not allowed to fast. And so healthy persons normally do not suffer from kwashiorko until to the very, very end of starvation. Then, as well, healthy persons, they just have to burn away proteins because nothing else is left in the body. For example, today in our class we had some cookies or something that were distributed. And I, I well, uh, it didn't matter to me. If you offer a hungry child a cookie, they will eat it, for sure. In Marasmus we have a low blood glucose and a low serum insulin, so all the glucose is concentrated in the brain. If we give carbohydrates, the, the insulin will rise, and then open the muscle for the glucose and so the glucose in the body will abscond in a muscle and will not be present for the brain again and so this will harm the patients during the refeeding. 
and this leads to quite a lot of uh, uh, consequences. So there is not enough glucose for the brain. And uh, with all the glucose going into the muscle cells, the blood is losing potassium and the blood is losing uh, uh, phosphate. And the last consequence is that the uh, persons, they have to take more oxygen uh, by breathing and they don't have the muscle power to, uh, to do these deep breathings, so they might die even from suffocation. In short, if you give a person in a marasmus state a carbohydrate, you might change marasmus to quashe or cor, and you produce a so-called refeeding syndrome, uh, and the patient can die within hours or days from refeeding. As an alternative to carbohydrates, we give a mixture of fat and protein, and the best mixture we have is the plumpy nut which is a peanut butter with a little bit of glucose in and its protein and fat and it will not induce a rise of the insulin. So it will not change the metabolic state the person is in.